Hi YouTube family, Lisa A. Romano here and I wanted to do a video today for all of those who follow, you, follow my work who are interested in learning more about consciousness and, and non-duality, meaning um, how can we take what we know about a codependent journey and recovery and emotional abuse and pain and suffering that we have experienced due to our childhood brainwashing. How can we take our experiences and apply them to on a grander scale to the concepts that we are all learning about unity consciousness, um, a soul's ev evolution, paradigm shifts, and life as we know it um, or life as we begin to know it, or hope to one day know it, as being something that is of a non-dual nature. What I mean by a non-dual nature is the goal of a soul, in my opinion, is to get to a point where he or she is no, no more ignorant, no longer ignorant to the idea that in, in he or she or in the soul being or in the spirit or in the, in the being itself is everything and everything is within the being. Better said, I am everything and everything is me. In you, there I am. In me, there you are. Coming through the veil of unconsciousness and, and being awakened from the subconscious mind so let's say we've been born into a system, a family system that's very dysfunctional. And like every soul being born or every human being born, we, the child, fall asleep to our true nature. And we fall asleep to the idea that we are already enough and we are already realized and we all we already qualify we already matter when you are a child and you're born to a sick dynamic you are born to a certain set of paradigms beliefs ideas that are infused into your brain which begin to create constructs, if you will, of the world around you. The brain needs to compartmentalize everything. The soul, or the, the inner being, or consciousness, outside of the scope of the brain that needs to be compartmentalize everything so it can exist in a linear plane, knows the truth. I am everything and everything is me. Now, what interferes with that knowing is the child's brain that is being downloaded with faulty information. In my case, so I'll use my life as a canvas to help explain what I think happens. So I'm stardust, as we all are, encapsulated in this physical vehicle born to two very unaware people, well-intended but unaware, who have or who are living out their lives through a paradigm that's very dysfunctional. They're both adult children of alcoholics, don't even know it, don't even realize it. They are below the veil of consciousness and they are downloading me with information that is based on their paradigms, what they learned. I'm born into that system. I am a soul encapsulated into a physical being with this thing called the brain that needs to compartmentalize and make sense of everything. That's a car, that's a door, that's a glass, that's good, that's bad, black, white, up, down, right, left, because this is a linear time-space existence. My brain is downloaded with information about the self. A child's brain identifies with its emotions. 
When a child feels unloved, the child identifies with feelings. It doesn't understand he or she is not his feelings or her feelings. When I felt unloved, I was one with those feelings and therefore it sounded like this in my brain. I feel unloved, therefore I am unlovable. I became one with the emotion, with the perception, one with it, identified with it, bonded with it. The idea that I was unlovable was a track that was laid down in my mind that became the framework upon which I built every other aspect of my life. I felt unworthy in everything. I felt not good enough in everything that I attempted across the board because there was this registered idea that had already been downloaded into my mind that I was not good enough and because my child's brain did not understand that because I was, wasn't aware enough yet, didn't have the cognitive ability to understand I am not my feelings. That would come later. That understanding would come later. We, when we are children, we are one with our emotions, and we identify with our emotions, and that's the problem. We are ignorant to the reality that we are not our emotions. We are the awareness of, we are that which is being, that is, we are truly the awareness of the emotion. When I am being, when I am noticing an emotion, that's who I am. I am the awareness of the emotion. I am not the emotion. The problem is that through the course of our lives, we unknowingly identify with our emotions. And so if we felt unlovable, therefore we are unlovable. We fear being alone. When we are not validated, we feel invalid, so we seek validation. So we are ignorant that we all are already qualify. We're earthlings, we're human beings, we qualify. We are consciousness, we are life itself. The fact that we are life, we are enough. The fact that we are here, we are enough. We don't know that because what interferes with our ability to become awakened it are, is ignorance of our true nature. And it gets compounded by pain and suffering caused by the illusions that we are not enough, created by the illusions and the faulty paradigms or the unhealthy paradigms of our family members who have downloaded us with information that reinforces the idea that we're not enough. So we go through our lives not really understanding the child's paradigm, the unconscious paradigm. We don't know. All we know is that we're suffering. We're depressed. We have anxiety. We're trying to fit in. We're trying to be someone else. We're constantly reading other people's emotions, disowned from our own emotions. We wonder what people think about us. We hope that they think that we're pretty. We hope that we think that they think we're thin enough. It's insane. So far removed from who and what we truly are. When we get to points in our lives where we're able to separate the childhood programming, the child's paradigm, and from identifying with the emotions that showed up and were created in childhood, when we are able to separate our minds from or separate ourselves from the idea that we are our emotions, we are beginning to understand that there's something more. That in spite of all our suffering, there's something more. And that when we truly are able to separate ourselves from what happened in the past 
and we're able to stand on a star. I call it the eye in the sky. That's the, that's the um, exercise and strategy I teach, becoming the eye in the sky and looking down on our life experiences and being able to say to ourselves, wow, I, re I felt unloved, uh, unloved, therefore believed I was unlovable, therefore always sought validation, never got it on a quantum level, attracted people who couldn't see me because on a psychological level, I couldn't see myself. So spiritually, I'm suffering because psychologically, I don't think I'm lovable. And thus, on a quantum level, scientifically, I am attracting people who can't see me. So as it is below, it is above. And when we are able to make those connections and stand firm in those connections, we begin to experience true paradigm shifts. Amazing, 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 amazing. I still get goosebumps when I think about the time I was driving on the highway and I looked up at a an enormous tree and it hit me. The same intelligence that created that tree created me. I am as worthy as that tree. I am as worthy as that star in the sky. I was always enough. And the idea that I wasn't was an illusion. And it's because the people that I were born to, I saw as God. And my child's brain could not, could not challenge what was happening. So I was a victim to what was happening. So my brain absorbed what was happening and then unfortunately identified with my feelings. When that, from that moment on, my awareness of self and, and, and the universe just kept expanding. And now what I understand is that that's when my suffering ended. When I went, oh my God, it was all an illusion. <laughs> the idea that I was never enough was an absolute illusion. And I let go. Or actually, it was just gone. The pain and suffering was just gone. And then my work had to, be, then what happened was I had to work on respecting that I still had belief systems that were registered. And although, as, as long as I didn't get involved emotionally with anyone, you know, as a man, then I could, I, could, I could stay pretty centered and I can hold on to my, what I call the ground zero. Um, but what happened was as I began to um, chart when I was single, of course, people, you know, but as I began to date in that time period, I still still was losing my my footing. My work had to begin at that point. It had to shift to okay, how do I create new belief systems? Knowing that I was enough was awesome, and knowing that that all the pain and suffering and all the choices that I chose along the way that were being chosen out of that old paradigm were, were, were really not my fault and so unnecessary um, was only part of the recovery process. To get to a point where I'm able to live in joy and happiness every day and make sense out of even and make sense to be able to make sense out of suffering is is so freeing. Um, to get to this point, I had to work on reprogramming. I had to work on laying down new tracks. I had to get uh, work on being very very um, practical in my daily every day. I had to learn what it was like to stop criticizing myself. I had to learn how to be non-judgmental. But one of the things that I want to leave you with today, aside from the information I just shared with you, is I would like you to begin practicing being non-judgmental of everything. And practice not being so pathologically and unconsciously caught up in needing to label everything. So when you are out and about today, 
or tomorrow or whatever, or forever, hopefully. I would like you to practice being the still observer. So it sounds something like this. You're, you're sitting on a park bench, you're just driving in your car, and normally what, what an unconscious brain does is this. It's car, yellow pants, black hair, red car, closed door, open store, ugly pants. Ooh, what are those shoes? Ew. Uh, this is what we're doing, Con an, un an unconscious mind. To get to a point in your life where, where you are awakened and you're experiencing enlightenment and you understand that you are everything and everything is you and life is, you know, conscious it, consciousness is creating life and your consciousness is creating your reality um, and you begin to understand what it really feels like to be a deliberate creator and what that means. That means that you have to stay highly, highly conscious and highly, highly aware. Because if you don't, the old paradigm is going to come into play and you're going to start recycling and recreating the old patterns. And before you know it, you're going to attract another narcissist into your life or, or an alcoholic. Be a thousand men in the room and you will attract the one narcissistic alcoholic. Guaranteed. All the time. So you want to try to stay as, as heightened um, and as aware as possible. So when you're driving down the road or you're in a park or you're just in your home, what you want to do is try to get create peace and balance and harmony by milking the observer within you. Not attaching to labels um, or opinions or judgments of anything that's your ex in your experience. So it's almost like you you become the backdrop observing observing the foreground. And so, so what you do is you're out in life, you're in your car, and you see a tree, and you don't label it a tree. You just, just look at it. See a dog, don't label it dog. Just drop your mind. Just observe it. See a flower, don't label it. Don't judge it. Just observe it. See a female, don't label it. Don't judge it. Just see her. See a man, see a family. Just don't label it. Just, just don't label it. Just observe. 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 Just observe. Just observe. If you can do that, you will find a stillness that is unlike anything you've ever experienced before. And then you will know what it feels like to be in the now. In the now. And really, the now is the only thing that matters because right now, your now is creating your tomorrow. And so learning to understand a unity consciousness or the non-duality can, so, can be achieved by be learning how to become still of mind and by practicing not needing to label everything. So what I'd like you to take away from this video is the idea, and a whole bunch of ideas, that our current adult realities, if we're still unconscious, are being created by the paradigms that were, that were imprinted into our minds when we were children and unaware and when we were identifying with our emotions. So if we were rejected by mother, we feel rejected. So whatever came up for us, Feeling rejected, I don't belong, I'm not lovable. We become one with that, I'm not enough. We become one with that. That is not our, re that's not our true nature. That's an illusion. That's, that's of ignorance. And I hope no one gets offended by that. But what we need to do is when we become enlightened, we become aware that that was an illusion. And pain and suffering begins to fade. It just begins to get released. I really hope that this has um, enlightened you. I would love and welcome your comments. And for those of you who would like to know more about non-duality and consciousness, I suggest that you um, consider studying the, some of the work of Robert Lanza, L-A-N-Z-A. Very interesting scientist who has, um, from what I understand, his, he, has, he has coined 
a new study in science called biocentrism, which is, which is getting closer and closer and closer to proving the idea that we are creating our reality as, I, as we go. That our consciousness, the ideas and the images that we see in our head, that over and over and over. So if the only images I have in my head are ones that reflect the idea to me that I'm not enough, I'm going to create that in my now. So Robert Lanz's work is very much proving that that's a fact. And if we can learn to, if we, those of us who are spiritually on this path of enlightenment, if we, we might need to help science, scientists understand how their, their studies and their discoveries can be applied to the spiritual path. Because those of us who are able to integrate very scientific ideas with spiritual evolution, we really are able to, to bridge these ideas for lots and lots of people. Because so many of these scientific explanations are very difficult to understand. But if we can take these scientific discoveries and find a spiritual language that is able to uh, better describe what's happening, you know, on a scientific level, then I think that we are so much closer to understanding consciousness and how our consciousness is affected by the spirit self and the emotional self and how it all comes together. It has been my pleasure to come into your hearts today, dear ones. Namaste. Bye.